Let's talk to Monica Crowley, get the real story. She's the online opinion editor for the Washington Times and a Fox News contributor. Here's the report, Monica. Mm -hmm. 80 some pages. What makes this different? from the FBI investigation? Well, it actually dovetails with what the FBI is looking at. The FBI investigation is running on two tracks, the possible mishandling of classified material and a broader investigation into possible violations of public corruption laws, meaning whether or not Mrs. Clinton commingled her work in the State Department with the Clinton Foundation work. That is actually the why of why she had a private server, why was she was operating on private email accounts. That's the bigger part of this investigation. But what the State uh, Department IG is reporting today, two things jump out at me. First of all, that she, um, she did not have permission to do this. She has stated repeatedly, Gretchen, that everything she did was, quote, permitted. Right. Her words, not mine. What they're reporting today is, no, she did not have permission to do this. And if she had asked permission, she would have been denied. Okay, the interesting thing is we just heard from Brian Fallon, one of our spokespeople with Catherine Herridge. He also sent out a tweet in a shortened version of that message. Here's what he said. GOP will attack her because she's running for president, but IG report makes clear her personal email use was not unique at State Department. So in other words, everybody does it, so it makes it okay. But the big difference here that Albright and Kerry and Powell and Rice, uh, Connelisa Rice, did not do was they didn't have a private server at home. Correct. Two points on this. One, they didn't have private email servers exclusively for official government business, the way Mrs. Clinton did. The second point to keep in mind is that Mrs. Clinton, as Secretary of State, actually fired an ambassador strictly for using private email for government business. So she was holding her underlings, ambassadors and others, to one standard while she knowingly was operating on, under another standard. All right, let's change topics because there's so much going on in the political world today. House Speaker Paul Ryan saying today he has not yet made a decision whether or not he's going to formally endorse Donald Trump for president, despite Trump coming ever closer to clinching the GOP nomination. The speaker going on to say today he doesn't have a timeline for when that decision will be made. Of course, the reason we're talking about this, Monica, is because there was another news organization that said he was going to endorse him today. Right. And so the speaker felt compelled to say, no, I'm not quite there yet. Look, he's as a speaker. Ryan, I have enormous respect for him. But with this long, drawn out, protracted process in dealing with Donald Trump, he's running the risk of a looking like a, a bit of a drama queen and b looking like he is following because many of his rank and file Republicans in the House and elsewhere across the country have now backed Donald Trump. Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee for president. He's the Speaker of the House. He is supposed to be leading his troops and he runs the danger now of looking like he is following behind um, in what is clearly inevitable for well, the party. And, and, and I'm not sure what's going to change in the way in which Trump is, is commanding his campaign that would suddenly make Paul Ryan come forward. I'm not saying he should or should not, but Trump is continuing being the Trump that we've known. Of course, for the last and he's year. not going to change and, going and into November. He's either. not going to change. And so if Paul Ryan is looking for some sort of a decorum change or, or something else more conservative, I'm not sure he's going to ever have that perfect day to do the endorsement. Right. Look, I understand if people like Paul Ryan have some reservations about the way Donald Trump would govern as president. But Donald Trump has gone more than halfway in trying to meet those concerns and people like Speaker Ryan. He's put out a list of Supreme Court nominees that he would consider when he's elected. He's put out a tax plan. He's talked about illegal immigration, building the wall and so on. He has laid out an agenda that is clearly conservative in so many respects. So I'm not sure what more they're looking for here. And again, Speaker Ryan runs the risk of looking like he's following rather than leading. All right. Here, uh, here's some nighttime reading for oh, you yes. tonight. I've already been through much of it, though. <laughs> but thanks, Scratch. I'll, I'll pass it along to you. <laughs> See you next week. You bet. Thanks.